Hey guys, Mrs. Valdivia here. So today we're going to be going over our lab solutions, electrolytes, and concentrations. And what this lab is all about is talking about a polarity of our different um, solutions and how that polarity affects the way they um, dissolve with each other or if they don't dissolve, um, electricity and whatnot. So it's their reactions with each other. All right, so to start off, in our lab, we're gonna talk about polarity of our substances. Now, a solution is something that's formed when one substance dissolves another substance. The substance present in greater amounts is known as the solvent. The other one is known as the solute. Water is considered a universal solvent. That means it dissolves practically everything um, that is polar, um, especially. So how does the solvent dissolve a solute? Well, it's based off the charge, um, the attraction of the charge, and they have to have similar polarities. So the key word here is like dissolves like. And what like dissolves likes mean is that polar dissolves polar, and nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So our polar substances, if we recall, those are substances that have um, ionic compounds, usually have a strong electronegativity differences, but you could also have covalent um, compounds that are polar as well when they don't share their electrons equally. Okay. So if we look at this um, image right here, we have sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound and it dissociates into sodium and chlorine when inside of water. So when in Placed with water, two polar compounds will dissolve each other, creating um, just one homogeneous mixture. All right. So now that we've gone through uh, polarity, let's go into electrolytes. So electrolytes is just the ability for your compound to create electricity. So if you have uh, no electrolytes in your compounds, your nonpolar substance, you're gonna have no conductivity. If you're strong electrolytes, right, then you're gonna have a high conductivity. If you have weak electrolytes, then you're gonna have a low conductivity. So let's talk about what it means to have a strong or a weak electrolyte. So I went ahead and I wrote down a couple of things that we were talking about with our polarity and our um, electrolytes. So when it comes to electrolytes, strong electrolytes, produce high conductivity, and they're polar. Weak electrolytes are also polar, but they produce low conductivity. Non-electrolytes are non-polar, and they have no conductivity. So sugar, um, sugar yeah, is a good example of non-conductive. So something that's strong, um, a strong electrolyte is going to be a compound that dissociates completely into ions. So your strong acids and your bases are considered strong electrolytes. Many salts are also considered strong electrolytes. So ammonium chloride, potassium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid. So these are strong compounds. So these are just examples. And for our weak ones, so weak um, electrolytes, so it produces very little conductivity. Uh, they, it's because they only dissociate partially into ions. They don't completely break apart. So hydrofluoric acid, um, silver chloride and acetic acid okay they only break apart partially um, and don't create that strong electrolyte that we see so how do we test conductivity um just simply try to charge something so you can light a light bulb um up and you could see how bright or how dim it is you could put a cell phone to charge those kind of things um depending on what your setup is actually going to be here we have a setup of two different metal products, or two different products, I should say, and rods connected to them, and they're placed inside water. So that water is kind of acting like the medium between them. And when we have no electrolytes being produced, then you're going to see no light. However, if you have electrolytes being produced, you're going to see a light. You're going to see a dim glow or a bright glow. Okay. All right, so let's go into the next part right here. 
Actually, before we start the next part, something I want to know about the non-electrolytes that produce no conductivity, they're nonpolar, right? Which means that they're actually molecules, right? They're just molecules, which are covalent compounds. So for something that's um, um, a non-electrolyte and non-conductive, it would be like our sugar, table sugar, C6H12O6, so that would also be non-conductive. Right, so we're going to go into concentration. Now, when you're doing your lab, it's going to have you take the measurements of a lot of different items. So you're going to take the mass measurements, volume measurements, and then you're going to use those to answer a couple of questions in your lab. Um, so make sure that you take the, those proper measurements and that you have at least two significant figures in your answers. The equations that we're using for concentration are similar to the ones, or actually they're exactly the same as the ones we did for our chapter 10 um, solutions or chapter 11 solutions, one of those two. All right, so we have mass percent. And this one you notice, the first one that they give us is M to M. That means mass over mass. So mass percent of mass per mass is going to equal to the mass of the solute so the part over the whole, over the mass of solution. And then you're going to multiply it by 100. Okay, so the mass of solute over the mass of solution. And the units that they're using here, note that they're using grams on both of the, both of the units. All right, let's go into the next one where you, mass per volume. Mass per volume. And it's noted by M over V. That's mass per volume. So again, same thing, the part over the whole. And what I mean about the part, the solute is the smallest part. So that's why we call it the part. And then the solution is everything put together. It doesn't say solvent, it says solution. So that is going to be your solute plus your solvent placed together. So this is mass of solute over volume of solution. Okay, so grams per milliliter times 100. And then we have molarity. And this is denoted by a capital M. And if we recall you guys, molarity is equal to moles per liter. Okay. That's what the capital M stands for. It stands for moles per liter. And we're going to do the moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. In milliliters. And multiply that by 100. Okay. So once you get all your data, you're going to be trying to place it all into these equations to find out, well, whatever it is that it's asking us. You'll notice here that it wants molarity of your sodium chloride solution. So the final one is to get to here, right? Okay. So, like I said, in your lab, you're taking all your different information down and you're writing all these different numbers. Okay. So let's actually um, just work a little bit with it together. Um, on the first question, it wants to know the mass of empty evaporating dish. Okay. Move this here. Okay. So I actually started working on this already. I'm going to get my trusty hand in the calculator because at times I don't trust my own math. And let's go ahead and do this. So it wants the mass of sodium chloride. Well, I have the mass of the dish and sodium chloride solution as 42, and the mass of the dish and dry sodium chloride as 32. Also have the mass of the evaporating dish. So in order to get the mass itself, I'm going to take the mass of um, my evaporating dish and subtract that from the dry sodium chloride. So that's 32.484. Minus 29.274. And I got 3.21. And that's actually because I did the dry one. That's actually this one. Okay. 
then to find the solution, I'm going to take the evaporating dish minus the solution. So that's the 42.284 minus the mass of my solution, which is 29.274. And I got 13.01. So now what's the mass um, per mass percent? And if we recall by looking at our equation, that's the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. So the mass of my solute is 3.21, and the mass of my solution is 13.01. And I'm going to divide those, and I get 0. Oops, forgot one step. Divide them and multiply it by 100. I'm going to get 24.67 as that percent. So as you can see, these are actually quite easy. Um, the next one is mass per volume percent. So you're going to take the mass of your substance, and you're going to divide it by the volume of your solution. So what was the volume of your solution? Um, that would be this one right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's actually, oh, the volume of our solution. Sorry, I apologize. It's right here. Okay, let's actually do it just because I don't like saying things wrong and then uh, leaving it as that. So the mass of my solute is 3.21. And I'm going to divide that by the um, volume of my solution, which is 9.8. And then I'm going to multiply it by 100. And I got 32.8. 755, so 76. All right, so we could see that that was a little bit easier. And now we're next, the next question, and the next one is moles of sodium chloride. Well, to get moles of sodium chloride, you're going to go from grams to moles. And you're going to do that using the periodic table, so you need to use the molar mass of your solute, which is our sodium chloride. So figure out what the molar mass is, and then you're going to get moles, right? And then once you get moles, you want to try to find your volume of sodium chloride in liters. Well, you know what your volume of sodium chloride is because it's given to you here, but it's given to you in milliliters. So you're going to convert milliliters into liters. And how do you do that? Well, your conversion factor is the following. In one liter, there is a thousand milliliters. Okay. So you're just going to divide your number by a thousand, and that's going to give you your liters um, for your solution. Then you're going to find molarity by taking this and dividing it by that. Okay, so this is going to give you your moles. That's going to equal moles. And this one's going to equal liters. And if you divide them, you're going to get molarity. And that's what you're going to put right here. All right, make sure that you show all your calculations and you upload them on here. Okay, and um, I hope this was helpful. Ciao.